So today's video, I thought I'd do something a little bit different. I am going to the state show jumping champs today and I'm going to go and plat up a horse. Um, so I thought I might kind of do a little tutorial on how I plat. I don't know what horse I am platting, but I believe it is bay, so um, I shouldn't have to add to my supplies because I have some black wool here. So I thought to start with, I might go through what I would bring if I get asked to go and plat. And I also use this um, before I show. So this is kind of my braiding kit slash night before a show kit and I'm just going to make sure that I've got everything um, so when I get to the show I have everything to plat this horse up and it's all neat and tidy and I know where it all is. So I actually bring some makeup, um, this is just the MP um, black, ultra black, so that's good for faces and even legs a little bit. Here I have raven's oil um quite often i will do raven's oil hoof black and a little bit of a face before i leave for a show um i just find it a little bit easier sometimes if it's if it's a close show it's just easier to um get it all done before i go so i've got gloves for that i've got a couple of bandages which are good for tails um i have this hair gel and I have my wool. I used to braid with um, like waxed thread, but I've really gone away from that. I find wool so much softer in their mane and it just sits in their mane nicer. I think you don't have to do it as tight. And also the big plus for me is that you can use these wool needles. So I've got heaps of wool needles. I use the, um, long plastic ones for forelocks and I have the short plastic ones for plaiting manes and it's so much easier than stabbing yourself stabbing the horse so I just have spares in there um this is my little kind of apron which I just have a hairbrush because it's nice to be able to brush their mane maybe even a tail this is actually a dog brush from like Kmart it was a couple of dollars and it's fantastic so make sure you can brush out their mane get any of the knots out um i also have this new needle oh that's my wax that needs the lid on i also have this new needle which is actually aluminium where is it oh here it is this is so this is like aluminium rather than plastic it's got a little bit of a bend in it but that's okay um, and I love this needle. I find it better than the wool, the plastic wool needles. Um, so I'm going to have to find some more of these because this is an absolutely fantastic needle. It's so, um, goes through, slides through their hair so nicely. It's so easy to thread with the wool. And it's also, um, just a little bit more durable than the plastic, plastic needles. There we go. So you can see it's just a little aluminium needle. So I definitely need him. I've got a clip in case sometimes I clip the hair out of the way when I'm um, kind of segmenting off the braid. Sometimes I don't worry about it. Um, I got these new bands. These are human hair bands and I'm going to trial them. I usually just get the horse bands, but lately i've had some really really terrible batches so i'm just gonna put my needle in there and my two combs so i have two combs this is a comb that i use for segmenting off their mane um and i will just put the i'll put a lackey round where i kind of want how far i want the segment to be and then just um divide it up through that and Here's another little divider, but usually this is too small. I, Unless it's a tiny little pony or something, I don't know how you would get the parts that small. So that's okay. And then I have my trusty sharp scissors. 
got to have some nice sharp scissors. These are probably a little bit too big, but that's okay. I've got my styling wax. I love this styling wax. It's human stuff, but I actually find it a bit stickier and it holds a bit nicer than the, um, than the proper horse wax. But this is just the judge's choice plaiting wax and it does the job. It's nice. It's probably better for them, I suppose, than the human stuff. Um, but yeah, so there's my little apron. Make sure that's in. I've got a nice soft cloth just for some grooming purposes. Um, spare white lackeys, just in case. Not that I've needed them for a while. I'll put them down the bottom. And a face cloth so you can't go wrong with the face cloth so that's my little kit that I would I would take to braid the horse today and off I go so this is one of the reasons why I really love wool because when I arrived this horse had rubbed out quite a large section of its mane and using my wool I was able to create some fake plaits. I ended up with four or five um, wool plaits and the best thing about wool is that you can actually color match pretty well with the horse's mane and if you don't have any spare kind of hair you can create these nice little fake plaits. So I just trimmed off some um, strands of wool and carefully into my sections I wove the wool in from working from back to front so that you kind of couldn't see uh, too much of the wool at the top. So there I just carefully wove in my wool strands into the section of her mane and ended up with kind of a four inch plait which I treated exactly how I would regular mane. I just banded it off at the end and then trimmed it off neatly with my scissors. So you can see that they're a little bit thin. Ideally, if I was going to make create, create fake plaits for like a hacking show or a turnout class, I would add in a lot more wool so that the plaits ended up the same size as the top section of mane where it's quite thick and healthy. But because this was just for show jumping, I just wanted to get something in so that she didn't have a section of plaits missing and I created these kind of smaller plaits. The technique I use to do the rosettes is to, when I've got these fiddly little plaits down the bottom, I will fold the end of the plait back up into the base of the neck and then kind of stitch it securely and then fold again so that I end up with a neat little rosette. You kind of want to stitch the braid into the base of the neck and go behind the plait so that you don't end up with too much wool showing on top. But because these were made of wool, it wasn't too important. And if I had a little bit of wool showing, then it wasn't the end of the world. Definitely in this kind of situation, product is your best friend. I will use plenty of wax to keep everything as neat and tidy as I can and I will put in plenty of stitches to make sure that they are secure. Here I'm just plaiting up a healthier braid and when I do a kind of nice healthy plait I will use more of a rolling technique rather than a folding technique and just make sure that I'm really stitching them in from the underneath and going back and forward underneath the plait to keep it all secure. You kind of want to go through each layer of your roll to make sure that nothing ends up sticking out. Also when I plait down I try to always go kind of right over left each time so that the pl plaits end up looking quite symmetrical. Starting with an evenly thick mane will always give you a better result. You need to really section out your mane evenly so that your plaits end up roughly the same size. But if you do have to 
you can always add some wool to make them look a little bit more even so here's the final result of my braided mane with the little fake plaits you can definitely tell that they're not the same thickness as her other braids but I think the overall all result is pretty good and I was quite proud that I managed to get something into a pretty challenging mane. She was such a nice polite horse to plait up and I think the end result looked really good. Here she is out in the ring competing and doesn't she look a picture? I was so glad that I went to the extra effort of putting in the fake plaits because she ended up a winner in her class. So I hope that you enjoyed my tutorial and we'll come back next time to watch another one. Thanks for watching.